So in this video, we will talk about MPLS VPN, L3 VPNs in particular, because uh, L2 VPNs are now in progress with uh, VXLANs, and we have put up a demo, uh, a video on that, that demonstrate how to do VXLANs using Arista switches. Here in this, we are using L3 VPN, basically that means that your core network is layer three routed. If you have a layer two network, then you can, with switches, you can use Q and Q, and that is also uh, up in, in a video that talks about how to do Q and Q with Arista switches. Here in this video, we'll take a look at Arista switches being a PE router that basically goes into a BGP address family, VPN, and uh, advertise extended communities. So let's uh, take a look at the uh, components of MPLS layer 3 VPNs. The core or the MPLS cloud that is in the middle or that connects the customers uh, from different, you know, it is or different connections would consist of MPLS LDP protocol that is going to be between the PE router, the P router, and other PE routers. So that's protocol number one that you need to configure in the PEs as well as the P routers. P routers are not necessary in the core, but uh, for scalability, they are used. But here I'm demonstrating how a VOS router can be configured as P routers. VOS does not support today uh, VPN capabilities, but it's in the roadmap. So as soon as it comes out, I will put up a video. Here again, the protocol that we are using to advertise or switch the packets is MPLS LDP between PE and P routers and P to PE routers. On the PE routers towards the customer side, you're gonna be using VRFs. For each customer, you're gonna use a different VRF and you're gonna use BGP to do uh, IBGP to do VPN connection between PEs and eBGP to connect to the customers. This way, eBGP will take care of the learning of the routes into the VRFs. Remember, there's no VRF on the customer edge. There's no VRF on the customer edge equipment. The VRF is a container or VPN routing forwarding table that would take the routes for your customer, put it in a VPN table which is VRF1 in this case for customer one and VRF2 for customer two. Customer, customer edge routers will be configured with BGP and they will be doing eBGP with the core infrastructure. So protocols in the core, again, MPLS LDP, BGP, and you need loopbacks on all the MPLS speaking routers. And these loopbacks would be advertised with the choice of your IGP. In this case, I'm using OSPF. And uh, you can also use ISIS or any static routing for that matter, which would not scale and uh, would be difficult to manage. But here I'm using OSPF to advertise the loopbacks. So OSPF is enabled on the loopbacks and these links here so that I can reach PE to PE and I can do IBGP with a source uh, update source of loopbacks. That way the VPN route that this PE router is going to learn from the customer side can be advertised directly to the other PE and the PE P router in the middle would have no routes or no knowledge of those routes. It will only those routes will map to a label and this router is just going to switch the labels for that specific flow. So 
Again, really from a protocol perspective, you got one here, MPLS LDP, you got an IGP, and then you got VRF, and then you have BGP that you would configure between the loopbacks. So you don't need IBGP on the P router, only between the P routers that connects to the customers and then EBGP from customer to the core. That's basically it for the MPLS core. The customer edge router would be very simple. It's going to run only BGP and redistribute connected or whatever routes are coming. If there are OSPF routes that are coming, then he's going to put OSPF into BGP and we have put up a video on that in terms of how to redistribute OSPF into BGP. So OSPF goes into BGP or redistribute connected in this case, and then you're going to advertise those routes into VRF2 on the MPLS side. And same here. In on the PE side, you're going to have to send this, uh, use the command send community. And we will look at that uh, configuration. Uh, but uh, this is pretty much it. Uh, the demonstration basically shows you that there are overlapping routes 101, 111 for customer two, as well as customer one. They're both using the same prefixes. This is just for an example. It doesn't have to be, but that's what you know. And the core is going to route these advertising to their appropriate VRFs. So this route is going to get advertised and then get populated here and get advertised back to the same customer on the second site. Similarly, this route gets advertised and learned in VRF1 and then gets populated in VRF1 here and then get, gets advertised here. <clears throat> Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, configuration is little lengthy for the PE routers. And we'll take a look at that. BGP is straightforward and PLS is straightforward. Let's take a look at the configuration of the Arista lab switch configured as PE router. So here's my switch one and switch two. Let's take a look at the customer two or customer one CE router. So let's do customer two CE router, customer two CE one router. It's pretty straightforward, show interface, show VRF. There are no VRFs configured here. So show IP route would give you BGP routes that are learned from this guy. So your 102.222 slash 32 is getting learned right here on this router here. This is C2 CE1 right here, C2 CE1. So if I ping that BGP route that I have learned, I've got reachability. <clears throat> So that's, let's look at the configuration, show configuration commands. You would see that that's basically all you have is BGP. Two commands and that you're redistributing your statics or connected through these two commands and then, you know, advertising your loop back. That's your C routers. Now let's look at the switch the PE routers. And I'm going to go into the parallel mode where you can see both at one time. And uh, Show IP route. This is the global table. You can see you have only OSPF routes, the loopbacks that we talked about. So show IP route. Copy execution so that we can see them together. Show IP route. Only OSPF routes for the loopbacks, as you can see on both sides. This guy to 
smaller. There you go. All right, so you have the OSPF routes here for the PEs, two and three, and two and three. These are the PE routers, switch one and switch two we're looking at. We'll look at the uh, MPLS core router as well. Let's look at the configuration of the BGP show running section BGP. Very straightforward. Let's go through it. So you have BGP AS12 as in the diagram. You're neighboring with your MPLS side 1022, which is this guy. So from 1011, which is this switch, switch one, you're neighboring IBGP neighboring with 1022. And then you're saying update source loopback zero. And this is the command that you need. Send community extended. This one is for default. So you, I didn't configure this, this is just there. And then in the VPN part, you are activating the VPN. And this command is unique to Arista, uh, which basically says your encapsulation for forwarding the packets is in MPLS protocol. And your next top is self for all the routes that you would forward the packets to. And then you have VRF configuration mode where you define VRF1 with a route descriptor. Well, one, you can make this one up, but it's typically the AS number, which is this one. And then, you know, customer number, whichever you want to choose, which is one here in this case. Route target import, route target export, basically you, whatever you're learning, you would export that to uh, the peers. That's basically what you're saying. So you're importing from the peers and you're ex exporting to the peers all the routes. And in the this one is the peer, this two statements or one statement really, this one is the default, is peering with the customer BGP. So 11001 remote AS1 is this guy, customer AS1. And uh, I'm using the same IP address because it's in two different VRFs. So as long as you're in a VRF, you can use the same IPs. And then this one is VRF2, which is this guy, it's remote AS1. And um, that's basically all I'm doing besides uh, redistribute connected. So straightforward BGP configuration on both sides. Here I'm doing it with the you know customer on... Uh, this side where my IPs are 22002 and VRF1 is 12.1 it matching with the VRF1 here, VRF2 route descriptor 12.2 matching with the one here and exactly the same IPs on both, both the links VRF2 and VRF1. Straightforward configuration. And then we will look at the MPLS. <clears throat> MPLS and here's the MPLS. MPLS IP, one command, and then MPLS LDP, and then you have to specify the router ID for MPLS, which is your loopback, and do a no shutdown. That's basically it for, for your PE configuration. Let's look at the, let's look at this guy here in the middle. So I'm going to uh, exit the multi-execution mode here, and I'm gonna do SSH into my, 100, 3, 3, and uh, my password is not for A, it's actually for Yoss. So this is my MPLS P router show interface. So you can see it's these two interfaces right here are E0 and E1. I do show VRF, I don't have any VRFs configured. And my show IP route is again just OSPF. I'm learning the routes from the PE routers, which is 101.1, 100.222. That's about it. And that's my OSPF. And then my show configuration 
commands and that's my MPLS right here. It's just set protocol MPLS to Ethernet E0, Ethernet 1, MPLS LDP discovery. And so it's basically starting from here all the way down here. You know, that's all you need to make it a P router, an MPLS router. And we can take a look at that with show configuration protocol MPLS. And you add the interfaces, you get into the LDP mode with the address of your loopback. And then in the LDP, you also say my LDP interfaces are zero and one. Router ID is this guy. This guy. That's about it. And OSPF is pretty standard. And that becomes your MPLS routers. You can verify that. Show MPLS LDP neighbors. And it does not show you that because it is broken. It's an open source router and this function does not work. But I think if you specify the LDP neighbor, uh, it may give you some information. No, it does not. So basically all you have to do is you can check the uh, PE routers to see if that will show you show MPLS LDP neighbors, and it does. So you have one neighbor on the switch, basically switch two has this guy as a neighbor and switch one will have this guy as a neighbor. So that's your MPLS L3 VPNs uh, doing your prefix routing with VRS, MPLS protocol and BGP. Uh, you can configure an Arista PE or Arista switch to be a P router as well. But again, you don't need a P router. You can directly connect this PE to a PE. In this case, I just wanted to demonstrate if a VOS would work as an MPLS router. All right. Hope this helps.